Okay, so this is vlog number four. No, this is vlog number three, I'm sorry. It's week four vlog, vlog number three. So, the weirdest thing happened to me today. And the actual action wasn't that weird, but my reaction to it was scary and kind of sad. Um, so, um, I've acknowledged before that I'm doing all of these vlogs in retrospect. Um, so, <laughs> I might not have had the story um, for week four, but or for the original week four that this was supposed to be for, but um, I have it now. Me and Celeste were talking about what our, um, what we wanted our dialogues to be for next semester. And we were talking about um, doing something that had to do with beauty standards for women of color, um, which is something that I find really interesting as a woman of color. So we got to talking about race and she told me about um, this dialogue that she had with uh, Laverne Piper, who was a PDF in the past about race. And she said that Laverne told her that all her life she had people telling her that she was never going to amount to anything. She would never be able to have a great job or um, that dream car or family that she wanted to because of the color of her, her skin. And Celeste asked me, you know, if I had any kind of testimony, any Thing that I wanted to tell people pertaining to my race what would it be and I'd say and I said um I don't know um like <laughs> and I was kind of I was kind of embarrassed and disappointed in myself because I felt like I hadn't been really cognizant of my experience as an african-american woman up to this point um like <laughs> I had certain privileges coming up um economically I wasn't that privileged I come from a single parent home my mom's in the working class and um she raised me and my sister by herself and then she got remarried and she had two kids with her new husband and they got a divorce and now she's taking care of the four of us by herself so she has two two college aged daughters I'm at Clemson University and my sister's at Clemson University and two small kids. My little sister Nadia is in the third grade and then Troy Jaden is in kindergarten. Oh gosh. I said I would never be the type of person to forget how old my siblings are but either way, two in college, two in elementary school. She's, do she's doing it all by herself so it hasn't always been easy. Um, but we moved from New York to South Carolina in 94 or 95 and um i think that people judged me by the way that i talk um so i guess that kind it kind of goes to show maybe the self-hatred that's really harsh but it might be a really true term to describe this occurrence because when i came to um when i came to south carolina i sounded a lot different from people that were born in south carolina or spent the majority of their life in South Carolina because I didn't have really a country accent. So people thought I was smart. And I, I'm not saying that I'm not smart. I mean, I'm, I'm smart, I'm kind of smart, I guess. But I wasn't a genius, but people thought this about me because I had this thing that was different about me. And, that, and that's the only thing that I can come up with because I've had people comment on the way that I talk before. I talk white. But that's a whole nother conversation that we can have another day. But either way, that was a factor in how people treated me. And because people thought I was smart, they expected more from me. Um, people, I've never had anybody tell me that there was anything that I can't do. I've never had anybody tell me that I was going to be a failure. I've never had anyone tell me that um, I didn't deserve to succeed. So I don't, I don't really have experiences with feeling put down. Now I know that I have faced discrimination, um, I have faced racism, I have faced prejudice because I am an African American female. Um, and <laughs> that's just, that's how our society is today. But I haven't faced it directly. 
Like, does that make sense? Um, but since having that conversation and realizing that, I was like, okay, I need to keep my eyes a lot more open and I need to, to see the racism around me because I always, I always, I have like a really nervous, awkward laugh. I'm sorry that that keeps interrupting everything that I say. Anyway, but um, I always felt really weird um, advocating for women or advocating for African-American women when I haven't experienced many things that oppress those two identities. I mean, I have, um, I have, I do have experiences of sexual assault, yes. And the more I think about that and how it, um, what it has to do with my race, I can see how the intersection of those two identities, um, kind of kind of aided in how the story of the whole hearing process ended um my I'm sorry but I'm really gonna stop laughing because I know I'm uncomfortable and that's why I keep laughing um my rapist was not suspended he was not expelled he was simply put on probation and I wonder if it would have been different if, and my rapist is African American. I wonder if it would have been different if my rapist was still African American, but I was white. And I reported that this African American male had sexually assaulted me on a predominantly white campus. Would he still be here? I'd like to think, no, he wouldn't. But because I am African American and African American have been overly sexualized for centuries being raped is something that was supposed to happen to me so because of that his sanctions were a lot less harsh if I had been a white woman and that's just what I believe and that's what I believe now that I'm thinking more about my race um, the other day I was walking to Brooks and there was this guy like here's a path right here okay here's the path right here and here is some land. And he's on the land mowing the grass. And there's this white family that's walking in front of me. And um, he stops mowing because, you know, the grass and stuff is in the air and it's, people are inhaling and stuff. So he stops mowing so they can walk past. And I'm right behind them. Not right behind them. I'm a few steps behind them. But after they've cleared it, I'm coming through. And he looks at me and then he keeps mowing the grass. Like, like it was like it didn't matter if I was there or not. And to me that was some ingrained racism. Um, and something happened today. And I think that what happened today was just, and my reaction to it was an accumulation of the racism that I have been, that I have been, um, noticing um I was in my math class and I was this is this happened today so I was dressed like this had my sunglasses on because of my eye um and I was doing my little thing <laughs> I can't I can't really see anything because my eyes were really irritated so I decided to give my um take my contacts out and let my eyes just rest for the day um but yeah so I'm sitting I'm sitting in class I'm writing a little something in my notebook and I'm in one of those classes where they, the teacher passes the attendance around a piece of paper and you just sign it, pass it to the next person. So the guy, he kind of throws the paper at me, you know? Um, and it wasn't this big dramatic throw. I didn't have to go all like this, catch a piece of paper. But there was just something about the way that he did it. Like he, he didn't look at me. He just and kept doing what he was doing. And, uh, and I don't know if I'm overreacting. Like, I, I'm i sure that I've had people do something like that to me before. But it was just something about the fact that he wouldn't look at me. He didn't even check to see if I got the piece of paper and he kind of threw it in my direction. That made me feel really small and dirty and 
unloved and worthless and all things bad. And the, the feeling stayed for a moment and it passed. But I just felt like because of the way I look, he felt that um, I wasn't I wasn't worth making sure if I got the piece of paper. Like, and I know that's really small and it's all up to the interpretation of the incident. It might not have been related in racism, but for me that's what it felt like. And it made me feel it made me feel really, really terrible. And I thought, okay, now you might be making a big deal out of this. Maybe this is nothing. Like, maybe that's just how he gives paper to people. So my teacher handed out um, an assignment. He, she gave out like, you know, she went down the aisle, gave like three pieces of paper to each desk set, and then the papers were passed down. And he did the same thing. He threw it to me. And this time, it was a kind of a more dramatic throw. I mean, I still didn't have to do all this to catch it, but like, it kind of I had to kind of catch it like this. And he didn't even look at me. Like he didn't even. He didn't even look at me. Um, and that made me feel really bad. Because I didn't feel like... He didn't think I was worth looking at. And that's the danger of... Of racism because... It... It kind of, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find my words right now. I know what I want to say, but it takes what would have been like a whole person and it like breaks them down into this one small feature or characteristic that you've been taught to believe that they are. And because of that, you treat them a certain way and you don't get a chance to get to know that person holistically because of the ideas that you have been taught to have about them. And that's not only with racism, racism, sexism, ableism, sizeism, and all the isms that I'm forgetting right now. So, but I won't forget that feeling that I had today. And I think it was good that I, felt that way one because I feel like I am realizing the racism that just still does exist that people don't even know that they're participating in and two it helps me to become more aware of my agent identities in how I might be oppressing someone of a target group and not knowing it and how I need to go out of my way to make sure that people in whatever target group don't have to feel small, they don't have to feel powerless or voiceless. Um, but I know that was a really long rant, but I'm just gonna read over what the purpose of vlog number three is and go over any questions that I haven't answered. So it's just, talk to us about your salient identities. Were, the, were there activities from this week's class that help you eliminate your salient social identities? What identities did you choose to explore in depth? Were there identities you ha would have liked to um, explore deeper so I don't remember what the activities were for that day I don't even know if I was there that day um, but I can imagine that the identity that I chose to explore in depth in class or the identity that I've been focusing on for since I got to college um, are my race and my gender sex and gender because I'm cisgender um, but yeah, those were the ones I chose it. Those are the ones that I, I imagine that I would have chose to um, explore in depth because those are the ones that I think about the most. Um, what identities would you like to explore deeper? Um, mental capability, I guess, because I was diagnosed with anxiety and OS with depressive symptoms last semester and I know that there's a lot of stigma around mental illness, so 
But because that's not one of my most salient identities and it's one of the identities that I'm only now like coming to accept, you know, because I mean, I've always had a problem with mood, but I didn't get like a formal diagnosis until the last semester. So it's only been a few months that I've known that I have had a mental, um, that I have a mental illness. So I haven't like experienced a lot of that stigma, but I would like to learn more about it more how there let me use my words I would like to learn more about how people with mental illnesses feel and how people without mental illnesses feel about people who have mental illnesses I mean aside from the obvious or or I guess I could use how I felt about people with mental illness before I got my diagnosis um but yeah that's all from vlog number three that was a fun one I like that one. I'm glad that because if you would have asked me this at week four, I wouldn't have had all the stuff to add. So I guess life throwing me lemons worked out for the good this time. So yeah, but that's it. Thank you, and I'll be back with vlog number four, cuatro, in just a minute.